Hey everybody, welcome to class today. We're gonna work on a grounding flow, lots of standing poses, but first, we're gonna set up our strap so that it's already ready and we don't have to worry about it once we're in practice. So take your strap, if you have a traditional yoga strap, you have the two buckles, so take the end without the buckles through both of your buckles and then slide them down until right about there, um, like a quarter of, three quarters of the way down and then take the end and put it through just one of the buckles and you'll make that loop, um, kind of like the belts that people used to wear if you need to do that over get another visual then definitely stop rewind and get your strap all set up like i said just to make sure that we don't have to stop while we're in our flow it's already ready and that's how we'll use it for class so we're going to start on the back once you have your strap all ready and then we're also going to have two blocks today as well you could also use a belt buckle if you'd like once you're on your back hug the knees into the chest for a moment, do any extra movements you want to start out with, and then we'll settle with the feet on the ground. Walk your feet to the outer edges of your yoga mat and let your knees knock in towards one another. You could keep your arms down by the sides, or if you'd like, you could place a hand on the belly and a hand on the heart. And then if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, you're welcome to close your eyes, but this is where we'll begin and just start to ground down. Be aware of all of the parts of your body that are touching the mat. So all of the back of your body, the back of the head, the neck, shoulders, and the pads of your feet. And start to pay attention to the rhythm of your breath. And then we'll do a simple five count breath here. So as you inhale, breathe in one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one again inhale one two three four five exhale five four three two one last one inhale one two three four five exhale five four three two and one here, start to introduce either ujjayi pranayama or a silent deep breath into your practice. If you're practicing with ujjayi, you'll constrict the vocal cords in the back of the throat and breathe in and out through the nose. That constriction creates a soft wind or wave-like sound as you breathe. So that's an option. And then the other option is just a silent deep breath with even inhales and exhales. So again, as you're grounding here, release tension in the face and jaw or wherever else you notice you hold tension. Our quote today comes from Lao Tzu. It reads, Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize nothing is lacking, the whole world belongs to you. And so with that, take a moment, set an intention for practice this whatever time of the day you're practicing in. And then once your intention is set, bring the arms down by your sides and heel toe your feet so your knees are now hips distance apart and the outer edges of your feet are parallel. And we're gonna match breath and movement here. So as you inhale, slowly start to curl the tailbone towards you and lift your hips. And you're still Ill inhaling once you get to the top of your movement. And then as you exhale, one vertebra at a time, lower back down onto the mat and kind of feel this uncurling of your tailbone. Your low back will lift a little bit as you uncurl all the way. And then again, inhale, curl the tailbone towards you, press into the feet, lift your hips as you're inhaling. Exhale, slowly lower one vertebra at a time, back down. We'll do one more without the arms. Inhale, press into the feet, curl the tailbone towards you and lift your hips. Again, match your breath and movement. So the whole time you're inhaling, you're lifting the hips. And once you get to the top, you're still inhaling a little bit and then exhale, lower the hips back down and you're still exhaling once you uncurl all the way. This time we add the arms in. So as you inhale, <clears throat> excuse me same thing with the legs but add the arms so as you inhale reach the arms up and overhead biceps by the ears once you get to the top exhale bring the arms down by the sides and your hips and your hands will lower ideally at the same time as one another two more times inhale lift the hips reach the arms up and over exhale lower the hips back down bring your arms down by your sides last one inhale press into the feet lift your hips reach the arms alongside your ears 
And as you exhale, arms down by your sides and slowly lower your hips down. And then take your time, pick the feet up. Once again, hug knees to the chest and then tuck your chin in towards your chest. Take three rocks up to a seated position and just keep the back rounded, keep the chin tucked into the chest to protect your neck. And then once you've done three rocks, come on forward into a child's pose position. Hips back towards the heels, arms reach out in front of you. And we're going to find that five count breath again. So inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. One more time. Breathe in, one, two, three, four five exhale five four three two and one and then back to either ujjayi pranayama or silent deep breath and then once you're ready tuck the toes lift your hips and find downward facing dog oh i'm sorry don't go to downward dog yet snake your body through come to lying on your belly my, my apologies drunk cobra is the name of this posture so you're going to extend your elbows out to the sides bend your elbows like 90 degrees come onto the fingertips as they're aligned under your elbows and then press the tops of the feet into the ground inhale lift your body and then as you exhale drop the left shoulder towards the mat as you take a twist inhale come through center and then exhale drop the right shoulder towards the mat as you take a twist Inhale, come through center and then start to slide side to side into your shoulders. And nobody's, if you're at home, nobody's watching you. So nothing to be self-conscious about, just moving freely. Again, the name of this posture is, I've heard it called intoxicated cobra. So channel your drunk cobra as you are in this posture. Exhale, lower down. Now we'll tuck the toes. Exhale, press into your hands and find downward facing dog. And then once you're in downward facing dog, whatever movements you want to start out with, feel free to take them, bend the knees, nod the head yes and no, sway your hips side to side, whatever feels nice for your body today. But do spread through your fingertips, be active into your hands, have your knees, I'm sorry, your feet hips distance apart at least, or maybe even wider, and firm your legs, draw your belly in, and whenever you're ready, settle into some stillness. Come back to your breath. And then on your next inhale, we'll rise up to the toes, bend the knees, gaze forward, and walk or hop your feet up by your hands. Take a hips distance stance for now. As you inhale, take a halfway lift, bring the fingers up to the shins, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, fold back over the legs, bend your knees as deeply as you need to. And then take a really deep bend in your knees, press into your heels, rise up to standing slowly as you exhale. Take your time rising once you're there, roll the shoulders back, stand nice and tall, reach up through the crown of the head. And then one more exercise of matching breath and movement. So take a nice uh, steady stance, turn your palms to face the front. And then as you inhale, start to rise up onto your toes. At the same time, you're reaching the arms up and overhead. Feel your palms touch, you're still inhaling. And then exhale, slowly start to lower the heels back down and bring your arms down by the sides. If you can, heels and hands touch at the same time. Inhale, rise up to your toes, reach the arms overhead. So once you get to the top of your toes and your palms, palms touch, still inhale. And then exhale. Heels come down, hands come down by your sides. No rush. Really trying to match your breath and movement here. Last time, inhale, rise up to your toes, reach the arms up and overhead. Find a steady gazing point for balance. Draw your belly in towards the spine. And exhale, lower the hands down, lower the heels down. And then stay with that hips distance um, stance with the feet. Inhale, reach your arms overhead. Exhale, grab your left wrist as you lean towards the right. Keep your pelvis square. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, come through center. Grab the right wrist and lean towards the left. So your hips are square to the front of the mat and your shoulders are as well. If you want, turn your head, look under the top arm. Inhale. As you exhale, come through center, gaze up, hook the right thumb in front of the left, and then take a baby back bend as you exhale. Lengthen more than you're bending, and then inhale, come through center. Exhale, bring your arms down by the sides. We're going to do that the other way around here. Inhale, reach your arms up and over. Exhale, grab your right wrist, lean towards the left, maybe a little deeper the second time around. Inhale. Exhale, come through center, grab your left wrist, lean towards the right inhale here 
Exhale, come through center. Look up, hook the left thumb in front of the right opposite grip. Inhale, lean back out of your waist, lengthen the spine as you lean back, keep pressing into your feet. And then as you exhale, bring your hands to heart. And we'll start with Surya Namaskar C variation here. So if you want, bring your feet a little closer together. Hands to touch a prayer. Inhale, reach your arms out and up. Exhale, forward fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step your right foot back, low lunge. Inhale, step your left foot back, plank pose. Shift your shoulders forward and then lower knees, chest, chin as you exhale. Chaturanga variation. Inhale, low cobra or high cobra. As you exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward. Exhale, step your left foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, press through your feet, sweep the arms, rise to standing. And exhale, hands to heart, other side. Inhale, reach your arms out and up. Exhale, forward fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step your left foot back. Inhale, step your right foot back, shift the shoulders past the wrist, and exhale, lower halfway or all the way down, Chaturanga. Inhale, low cobra, high cobra, or upward facing dog in your back bend, and exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your left foot forward. Exhale, step your right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, press into the feet, sweep your arms, rise to standing. Hands to heart, that's one round. We'll do it again one more time. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step your right foot back. Inhale, step your left foot back. Either Chaturanga, lower halfway or all the way down as you exhale. Back bend of choice as you inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward, low lunge. Exhale, step your left foot to meet the right, forward fold. Inhale, press into the feet, rise to standing, sweep your arms out and up, and hands to heart, exhale. Inhale, last time, sweep your arms out and up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step your left foot back. Inhale, step your right foot back. Either Chaturanga Dandasana or always the option to skip these vinyasas and go right away to downward facing dog. And be sure to modify as you need to. Inhale, step your left foot forward. Exhale, step your right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, press into the feet, sweep the arms, come to standing. And exhale, hands to heart. Moving on, inhale, sweep your arms out and up. As you exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga, or again, option to go to downward dog right away. Exhale as you lower down. Inhale, back bend of choice. Exhale, use your legs, go to downward dog. Inhale, lift your right leg, and as you exhale, scorpion dog, bend the knee and stack your right hip open on top of the left. Feel free to add in any extra movements that you wanna feel here. Circle the knee or ankle. And then as you inhale, Level your hips back off and exhale, right foot on the outside of your right hand, lizard lunge. For this variation, I'll keep my back knee lifted, but if you would rather and you need to, feel free to drop your uh, back knee, your left knee. Bring your hands to blocks if you need to, come higher, bring the floor up to you. If there's space to go lower, you can, as I did here, bend the elbows and let your elbows rest on blocks, or you might have the space to... Bring your hands or elbows all the way down, but keep your spine and neck long. Avoid sagging between your shoulder blades. Keep the breath steady. And then as you're ready, come back onto your hands. And then spin the knife edge of your left foot flat, heel toe the right foot to the outer core, to the middle of your mat rather. Your heels will face in, your toes will point out, and then reach your right arm up. Side plank variation here. Keep your left leg long and extended and strong. And then spin your heels up, step your right foot back to plank. Yogi's choice to chaturanga as you exhale or to go to downward dog as you exhale. Inhale, lift your left leg. As you exhale, bend the knee and stack your right left hip open on top of the right. Keep the weight even through your hands and arms. Make any extra movements that you want to feel here. Inhale, level your hips off. Exhale, left foot on the outside of your left hand. Option to keep the back knee lifted, but you could also lower if you needed to. Hands to blocks, maybe come higher or maybe bend the elbows, go lower, elbows to the floor or blocks, but again, keep the head long, reach the crown of the head forward, avoid sagging in between your shoulder blades. 
Keep your back leg engaged. Lift your right inner thigh. Press into your right heel. As you press your right heel back, reach the crown of your head forward. And then start to come back onto your hands. Move the blocks out of the way. Spin onto the knife edge of your right foot. Heel toe the left foot to the middle of your mat. Right hand down. Reach your left arm up. Side plank variation. Keep your hips lifted. Inhale. And then as you exhale, spin your right heel up. Step your left foot back. Plank pose chaturanga as you exhale or plank pose downward facing dog. Inhale back bend of choice. Exhale downward facing dog. And steady your breath here. Soften the face and jaw. Maybe come back to your intention. Tone the legs. Draw the navel towards your spine. Spread through your fingers. Another round of breath. Inhale, rise to the toes. Bend the knees. Gaze forward. Walk or hop the feet up. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, press down, sweep your arms, rise to standing. And then as you exhale, samastitihi. And then find chair pose next. So either feet hips distance apart or heel toe your feet together. Inhale. And then as you exhale, bend the knees, sweep the fingers down and up. And then bring your hands to the waist, pour the weight into your right foot, start to lift your left foot, and then send your left foot back to a crescent lunge, high lunge. Heel toe the right foot, that's your front foot, to the outer corner, outer edge of your right, of the right side of the mat. Spin your left heel down, and then notice as you spin your left heel down, try to keep your hips square to the front of the mat, like car headlights, if you will. The front, your two hip bones are square to the front of the mat. Might be harder to keep that with the warrior one, you might feel your left hip pulling back and that's okay, but it's important that your left foot stays flat. Draw your belly in, lengthen the tailbone down, and then as you exhale, bring your hands down. The option to spin your left foot all the way and round and step your right foot back to meet the left to find a side plank, or you could do that first variation we did with the right foot in the middle of your mat. Take a breath here. You could also lower your bottom knee if you needed to, and then inhale, come to plank pose. Either exhale, chaturanga, or exhale, downward facing dog. Just a breath here, we'll come back to chair pose. Inhale, once you're ready, rise to the toes. Bend the knees, gaze forward, walk or hop your feet up. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees, chair pose, reach your arms up. And then as you exhale, come to standing. We'll do the other side, inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. Bring your hands to the waist. Start to pour the weight into your left foot. Lightly start to lift the right foot and then send the right foot back crescent lunge. Heel toe your left foot to the outer edge of the mat. And then as you spin your right heel down as much as you can, keep your hips square to the front of the mat like car headlights. And then option to reach your arms up and touch the palms here. And then if your neck's okay with it, you can also gaze up towards the hands. Sink your hips lower, firm your back leg, but again, left, right foot, your back foot is completely flat here. Front knee is bent over the middle toe. Inhale. And then as you exhale, bring your hands down. So you have to spin your right heel all the way around to the opposite side and either step your left foot back to meet the right or you can do that first variation, have your left foot in the middle of your mat. Right hand down, left arm up. Maybe you can turn your gaze up towards the top hand. And then inhale, return back to plank pose. Yogi's choice to exhale, chaturanga, or exhale, downward dog. Inhale, back bend of choice. Exhale, downward dog. Again, use your legs as you make that transition to downward facing dog from up dog. As you're ready, inhale, rise up to the toes. Bend the knees, gaze forward, walk, or lightly hop your feet up. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees, chair pose, reach your arms up, Utkatasana, exhale to standing. Two rounds of Surya Namaskar B, the first one we'll do a little slower, second one we'll do one breath per movement. Inhale, hands to prayer, exhale, bend the knees, fingers graze the ground, reach the arms up, inhale here, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, <clears throat> halfway lift, exhale, bend the knees, step back, plank pose, inhale, Exhale, chaturanga, hug the elbows in. Inhale, back bend of choice, low cobra, high cobra, up dog. Exhale, downward dog. 
Inhale, step your right foot up by the hand. Exhale, spin your left foot down. Inhale, reach your arms up. As you reach the arms up, sink your hips lower. Exhale, stay. Inhale. And then as you exhale, bring the hands down to the ground. Step your right foot back. Inhale in plank pose. Yogi's choice. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Or go to downward dog. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. Modify your vinyasas. Make it work for you. Inhale, step your left foot forward. Exhale, spin your right heel down. Inhale, reach your arms up. As you reach your arms up, sink your hips low to the ground. Draw your belly in. Lengthen your tailbone down. Inhale here. As you exhale, bring the hands down to the ground. Inhale, step your left foot back. Either exhale, chaturanga, or exhale, downward dog. And then we'll come back to an even breath here. And if you need to, open the mouth on your exhale. Release some heat and tension that might get built up around your jaw. Next round, we'll do this again. One breath per movement. It might go a little fast. If it does, slow it down. Go at the pace that works for you. You want to keep your breath steady, most importantly. Inhale, rise to the toes. Exhale, walk or hop your feet up. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, chair pose, exhale to standing, one breath per movement. Inhale, unless you need to go slower, then go slower. Exhale, bend the knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. Inhale here, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. This time, exhale, option to hop back to plank or to chaturanga, land with your elbows bent. Inhale, back bend of choice. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, step your right foot up, spin your left heel down. Still inhaling as you rise to warrior one, touch the palms. Long exhale brings the hands down to the mat. Step the right foot back, still exhaling through chaturanga, and then big inhale into your back bend. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, step your left foot forward, spin the right heel down, still inhaling, reach the arms up, sink your hips down. Long exhale, ride the breath down, step your left foot back, still exhaling through chaturanga, and then inhale, big back bend, exhale, downward dog. Whoo, come back to your breath here in downward dog. Definitely quick as we moved through that, but it's good because it teaches you to really slow down your inhales and exhales. But it's tough. The first time I did this, I was out of breath. I was frustrated. Surya Namaskar can be a big challenge. But I think it does good for pranayama practice. So we'll inhale up to the toes. Bend the knees. Walk or hop your feet up. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees. Chair pose. Reach the arms up. And then exhale to standing Utkatasana here. Okay, so we're just going to start to use the strap a little bit. So make sure that's at the top of your mat and close by. Come back to standing and take a hips width stance with your feet. Inhale, lengthen your spine, look up. As you exhale, forward fold. So we'll do Padangustasana here. So forward fold. So pick your feet up here. Slide your hands under your feet. Bend your knees to make that happen. And then inhale, take a halfway lift, lengthen your spine. And then as you exhale, forward fold, Padangustasana. Like I said, bend your knees as much as you need to to make sure that your hands really are under your feet here. Let your head be heavy. Bend your elbows out to the sides and use the strength of your hands and your arms to get you to fold a little deeper here. And then inhale, take a halfway lift. Hands are still under the feet. And then exhale, bring your hands out and then find your strap. Take the loop of the strap and place it on the bottom of your right foot. And then bend the elbow. Have your right hand as you grip it about in line with your knee. Take a bend to both of your knees. Take your left hand to your waist. Inhale. And then as you exhale, press into your left leg. Use your gaze. We're going to rise up to standing here. Uttita Hasta Padangustasana Variation A. And then as you exhale, come back right where you started in that forward fold. And we'll do the other side. Strap around your left foot. Bring your right hand up to the waist. Bend both of your knees. Inhale, find your gaze. As you exhale, pour into the right foot. Start to lift your left leg. Use your gaze to help with balance. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, slowly again, we'll come back just the way we came into it. Use your gaze the whole time to help stay steady. And then bring the arms down. Remove the strap. That can go off to the side for now. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, press into your feet, sweep the arms, rise to standing, Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, bring your hands to the heart. And now here, bring your hands to the waist and take a step back with your left leg. Left toes will face the outer corner of the mat, setting up for warrior one. Keep your right leg straight. Inhale, reach your arms out. As you exhale, bend the right knee and watch the knee track over the middle toe. Inhale, if you need to lengthen your stance, straighten the leg, walk your left foot back. Exhale, bend right knee over the middle toe. One more time, inhale, straighten your right leg. Exhale, bend and settle into warrior two. So heel to heel or heel to arch alignment. Front knee, again, over the middle toe. Draw your belly in. Lengthen the tailbone down and reach out through strong arms. Gaze over your front fingertips as you still keep weight in your back foot. Inhale, reverse warrior. Left arm up. Right arm up. Left hand slides down the back leg. Again, track your front knee over the middle toe. Inhale here. Exhale, back to warrior two, straighten the right leg, hands to the waist. Now, right toes face the side of your mat, left toes face forward, inhale. Exhale, warrior two, but again, inhale, straighten the leg, take a wider stance if you need, exhale, watch the left knee track over the middle toe as you bend the knee, inhale, straighten, last time. Exhale, bend into warrior two. Find your stance here, press strongly into your feet, draw the belly in, reach out through your arms, gaze over the front fingertips, keep weight in your back foot, inhale, lean back, reverse warrior, exhale, bend your front knee deeper, back hand soft on your back leg, inhale, Exhale, come back to straighten both legs and then turn both of your toes to face the long edge of the mat and then turn your toes out and your heels in. Exhale, bend your knees so you're in goddess pose or horse pose as it's also known as. Knees still track over your middle toes here. Bring your hands right above your knees, inhale. And then as you exhale, left shoulder drops down towards the ground as you take a twist and gaze over your right shoulder here. And then use your arms to also keep opening your knees out wide. Maybe find a little bit of a hip stretch here. Inhale, come through center. And then exhale, drop the right shoulder towards the ground. Turn your gaze, look over the left shoulder. Keep the weight on the outer edges of your feet. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. And then as you exhale, come to center, bring the hands to the waist, straighten the legs, and then pivot on your heels, come back to the top of your mat. Hands to prayer, samastita hi. Inhale. As you exhale, bend the knees, chair pose, utkatasana. Inhale here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, walk or float, chaturanga. Again, if you float, land with bent elbows. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, lift the right leg. You can stick with scorpion dog as you exhale or wild thing. Right foot on the left side of the mat. Right arm reaches up and over. Inhale, and then exhale. Long, strong exhale to bring you back to three-legged downward dog. Exhale, go to warrior two. Push, pause, rewind. Do it again if you need to. Exhale, open up to warrior two. Inhale, lean back, reverse warrior option. This time to take a half a bind and wrap your left arm behind your back. Inhale back to warrior two, exhale, cartwheel the hands down, step your right foot back, chaturanga, or step your right foot back, downward dog. Inhale, lift your left leg, exhale, scorpion dog, or option wild thing, left foot on the right side of the mat, left arm reaches up and over, lengthen out, inhale, exhale, use your core strength, come back to three-legged downward dog, exhale, left foot in between the hands, spin the right heel down, warrior two, as you cartwheel the arms open, inhale, lean back, reverse warrior, option to wrap the right arm behind you and reach for your left hip crease as you reach the left arm up and over, inhale, Exhale, chaturanga, cartwheel the hands down, option to vinyasa or option to go to downward facing dog right away. See where your breath is. That's always a good telling point of how your body's responding. Even out your inhales and exhales and you can always take child's pose. You can always take a break if you need a break. For now, come back to a steady breath here in downward dog. Inhale, rise up to your toes, bend the knees, gaze forward, exhale, walk or float the feet up, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, forward fold, inhale, bend the knees, chair pose, reach your arms up, utkatasana, exhale to standing. 
So we'll do a couple standing balancing postures here. Utita, Hasta, Padangustasana. And we'll use that strap variation for this posture as well. We'll start with the left leg on the ground. So left hand to the waist. And you'll bend your right knee. And again, loop the strap around your right foot. Find your balance before you go into the posture. Find a drishti, that's your gazing point. Gaze eye level, inhale. Exhale, kick your right heel forward and straighten the leg as much as you'd like. I like to grip down a little bit more, but make sure that your shoulder, your right shoulder isn't coming out of the socket. So maybe your elbow's bent a little bit more. Or you might not, not even use your strap. You might just have your peace fingers wrapped around your right big toe. Inhale. Now as you exhale, move the right leg out to the side. Option to keep your left hand at the waist or extend your left arm out to the side and maybe turn your gaze and look over your left hand. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, bring your right leg through center. Take the strap with your left hand. Open the right arm out to the side for a twist. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, two. Inhale, three. Exhale, three. And then inhale, come forward, drop the strap, hold the leg. It's tough, it's tough. Breathe in and then exhale, bend the knee and set the right foot down and we'll set up for the other side. Bend the knees and circle your left ankle out if you need to. Okay, so loop the strap around the ball of your left foot. Right hand to the waist. And again, first, just find your balance. Find yourself in the posture. Inhale. Once you're ready, exhale, kick your left heel out. Try to have your grip be loose, not too, too constricted there with your grip. If you have either your big fingers, your peace fingers around the big toe, or if you're grabbing onto the strap. Try not to lean forward, have your shoulders right over your waist. And try to have your standing leg bent, inhale. Exhale, open the left leg out to the side. Option two, release your right hand to the waist. Extend right arm out to the side and maybe turn the gaze, look over the right shoulder. Take one more breath here, inhale three. As you exhale, start to bring the left leg through center. Bring your right hand to the strap. Open your left arm out to the side, inhale. Exhale one, find your drishti for balance, inhale. Exhale two. Inhale, soft face and jaw, three. Exhale, three. And then again, inhale, come to center, drop the strap, hold the leg high, inhale, and then exhale, bend the knee, set the foot down. Give a wiggle to your hips as you need to. One more standing balancing posture, rickshasana tree pose. So again, hands to the waist, we'll start with the left leg down, inhale, lift your right knee to 90 degrees, and then as you exhale, bring your knee out and your heel in, external rotation in the hip, bring that back to center, exhale, knee out, heel in, bring that back to center, and then one last time, knee out, heel in, from this position in the leg, find your tree pose, you could kickstand the toes, or you could have the foot above or below the knee. Your hands could stay at the waist. You could bring hands to prayer or reach your arms up. Or today I did reverse namaskar. So tee your arms out to the sides, spin your thumbs down, bend the elbows behind you and either press your fists together or maybe press your palms together. So rebound your right foot into the left leg. Use that to keep you strong and steady. Keep pressing into your left foot, but also lengthen up out of your waist and reach out through the crown of your head. Continue to breathe, and if you fall out of it, that's okay. Perfectly normal. Bring your hands back to center. Inhale, point your right knee forward, and exhale. Lower the right foot down. We'll do the other side. Hands to waist. Inhale, lift your left knee. Exhale, knee out, heel in. External rotation in the hip. Inhale, center. Exhale, knee out, heel in. One last time, center, exhale, knee out, heel in. From there, place your left foot anywhere on the right leg except for the knee. Always avoid putting pressure on the knee. Options, same thing you did with the arms on this side. Tee the arms out to the side, spin the thumbs down, bend the elbows behind you, either press fists together or press palms together. Press your right leg down, 
press your left foot into your right leg and rebound your right leg back into your left foot. Draw the belly in as you lengthen the waist. Reach the crown of the head tall. Release the hands down to the sides. Point your left knee forward and set your left foot down. Shake it out. Let it go. We're done with our standing postures. We're going to stretch the hips out here for a nice long couple holds. So we'll take a vinyasa first. Inhale, prayer pose. Touch the palms. Uh, tadasana. Inhale, reach your arms out and up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, either walk or float vinyasa. Or again, no need. You can go right to downward facing dog if you'd rather. As you exhale, hips up and back, downward dog, take a breath here. And then come on down onto your knees. And we'll set up for a lizard pose and we'll also add in a revolved lizard pose, parivrita, uthan pristasana, but first lizard pose. So find your strap. And this is just setting us up. And also I rolled the outer edge of the left side of my mat in. And that just gave me a little extra padding for my knee. And then place the strap around your left foot. And then bring that strap over your right shoulder. And you can let the strap, the loop, come up by your shin for now. And then place your left right foot. Right foot comes to the outside of your hands. Lower your left knee down. This time we're going to have the knee down. So this might be enough of a stretch for you. You can stay here. You might bring your hands up to blocks and bring the floor higher. If there's space, you can bend the elbows and go lower. We did this earlier. Just now we have our bottom knee on the ground. Again, keep the crown of the head reaching forward. Try not to sag between your shoulder blades. If you have space to go lower, that's fine. But also see if you can keep your right foot flat on the ground. Sometimes we roll to the outer edge of the knife edge of the right foot and let the knee open. But this time try to keep the knee kind of almost hugging in towards your upper shoulder, almost like you were in crow pose, instead of letting the hip kind of find that external rotation. Release tension in your face and jaw and also maybe your hands are gripping here as well. See if where you could soften. You can stay here. If you're enjoying the stretch, then stay. Or if you want to add in a quad stretch, and that's what we have the strap for, bring your left hand to a block if you have a trouble finding your quad. And then reach back with your right arm. Move your loop of the strap up so it's on the top of your right foot. Left hand to the block, and then bend the right elbow in until you start to draw the heel closer to you. Turn your gaze to look back towards your foot. Now you might have the space to not need a block for your left hand and you also might have the space to not need a strap to grab the knife edge of your right foot. That's fine. You might even have enough space to lower onto your elbow, left elbow, while still maintaining that grip, that bind here. Big stretch for the hips. Keep the face relaxed and your breath smooth and steady. Inhale. Now as you exhale without slingshotting, release your left leg. And then one more stretch in this sequence. We'll find half Hanumanasana, half splits. Heel toe your right foot a little closer to the center of the mat. Straighten the right leg as you pick up the toes and find a forward fold. Any amount over your right leg. You might use blocks for your... Pardon me. You might use blocks under your hands, and that's fine. Or you might feel comfortable having the hands on the ground. Keep your spine long, the neck long. And kind of lightly dig your right heel into the ground and pull your right hip crease back. Breathe in here. And then as you exhale, we'll come out of it and just make some circles with that right knee. Unwind the hip. We've done a lot on that side. Now we're going to go to the other side. So unfold the left side of the mat if you did that. Move the strap from the left foot to the right foot. And again, it can kind of come up by the shin or the ankle for now. That's fine. And then long side of the strap comes up and over your left shoulder. And then also, if you need to, roll the right, um, right edge of your mat over to give you a little extra padding for your knee. So strap uh, comes to the left shoulder. Place your left foot on the outside of your left, on both of your hands, really. Lizard pose. This might be enough for you. Maybe you come higher, bring blocks to hands. You can lower your back knee down. Or if there's room to go lower, you might bend the elbows on blocks. 
Or you might have space to bring your hands or your elbows down onto your mat. Don't sag between your shoulders. Keep the spine long. Continue to reach the crown of the head forward. Soft hands, face, jaw. There might be tension. As best you can, try to use your breath to soften that tension. Same thing. Keep your left foot flat. You might turn the toes out a little bit and that's fine. But don't, for now, roll to the knife edge of the foot. And also keep the knee hugging in towards your shoulder. And then as you're ready, stay here or make your way onto your hands. Maybe you grab a block for your right hand. And then you'll reach back with your right arm. Grip down onto the strap and move the strap up so that it's on the top of your left foot, uh, top of your right foot now. And then hug the right left elbow in towards the body as you turn the gaze to look back towards your foot. Spark up your toes of your back leg. And then again, you might forego both those props. Just have your right hand on the ground and reach back with your left arm to find the inner arch of your right foot. Keep breathing can be a big stretch for the hips and also the hip flexors. Be where you're at, honor your body today. Two more breaths here. Inhale, without slingshotting, exhale, release your right leg and then heel toe your left foot a little closer to the center of the mat, straighten the left leg. As you point the toes up, bring your hands either to the ground or maybe blocks and find a stretch for your left hamstring. Inhale. And then as you exhale, bend your left knee and make some circles in three-legged tabletop with that left knee, just getting some movement back in the hip joint. Okay, from here, swing your legs around, unfold your mat and get rid of the props. We're done with the props for the practice, so those can be put off to the side. Swing your legs around, and then we'll come down onto the seat, extend the legs out in front of you, point the toes up, roll your inner thighs down. Ground down on your sit bones. As you inhale, reach your arms out and up. As you exhale, forward fold any amount at all over your legs. Now, I said we were done with the props, but I guess you could use a strap if you just don't quite have that bind. You can't quite reach the feet yet. Grab your strap and let your strap do the work for you of finding that uh, bind around your feet. Or you can place, if you found the feet rather easily, you can place a block on the bottom of your feet, and that just gives you a little more to reach for. Shoulders away from the ears, draw your belly in, roll your inner thighs down. Roll your inner thighs down if your legs are straight. If there's a small bend to your knees, that's fine. Just focusing here on straightening the legs if they're slightly bent. Two more breaths here. Inhale. And then as you exhale, come on out of the posture, onto the backs for the last time. So bend your knees and slowly, one vertebra at a time, lower down onto your back. Walk your feet in and we'll set up for bridge pose. So knees are over your ankles, knees are hips distance apart, arms down by your sides. As you inhale, press into the feet, curl the tailbone, lift your hips. You could walk your shoulders under and your hands closer to maybe find a bind. Roll your inner thighs down, chin away from chest, lift from behind your heart. Inhale, exhale here. Inhale two, exhale, release the hands if they're bound and slowly lower all the way back down. Walk your feet to the outer edges of the mat. Let your knees knock in towards center. If you'd like, a hand on the belly and a hand on the heart. We'll do one more round of back bends. It could be another bridge pose, or if you'd like to, full wheel. And we'll set up for that now. So feet hips distance, either arms down by your sides for bridge, or bend the elbows, fingers face towards the heels for wheel. As you inhale, press into the feet and maybe into the arms. If you're going for wheel, straighten the arms. Press your chest back towards the wall you're looking at. Everybody will roll inner thighs down and point the nose in 
toes and knees straight forward. Inhale. And then exhale, lower down. Again, don't stop at the crown of the head. Just go straight for it. And then if you need, windshield wiper the legs side to side to release in your back a little bit. And then we'll do eagle twist here with the legs. So tee your legs and then tee your arms out and then cross your left leg over the right single wrap or double wrap. <clears throat> Inhale. And then as you exhale, let your knees drop to the right. Now as you do that, keep your right left shoulder <clears throat> grounded down. Once your left shoulder starts to lift, maybe grab a block and support your legs with the block. You don't want your left shoulder to be lifted here. You want both of your shoulder blades to be completely grounded on your mat. If it feels comfortable for you, you can turn the head and look over your left shoulder. If the twisting is too much, then don't let, feel like you have to take that. Uncross your legs and just let both of your knees fall to the right. Let's take two more breaths here. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, twist. Inhale. And then exhale, use the strength of your core and press into your arms. Bring your legs back to center and then uncross. Gently hug the knees into the chest for a moment and then tee your arms out. Cross your right leg over the left, single wrap or maybe a double wrap. Inhale. As you exhale, knees start to fall to the left here. And then again, go as far as your right shoulder allows. Once your right shoulder starts to lift, support your legs with the block. They might not go all the way down to the ground, and that's okay. You can keep your gaze up or maybe turn your head and look over the right shoulder. Also the option to uncross your legs and just let both of your knees twist to the left. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, twist. Again, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Inhale here. As you exhale, use the strength of your core and your arms to bring your legs back to center. Unwind and hug your knees into the chest. And here, add, these are our final movements for class. So add in any last postures, stretches, shapes that you want to feel. Maybe you're still rocking side to side, a happy baby if you want to take it. Whatever you need to make sure you feel complete and satisfied in your body before opening up to find final resting pose, corpse pose, shavasana. Extend the legs long, arms down by your sides. Any extra props that are gonna make you feel really comfortable here, add them in. Maybe a blanket under your knees or a block under your head. And then you could also, if you liked that feeling of hand on the belly, hand on the heart, you could do that here in Shavasana as well. So I'm gonna read one more time our quote for today as you're settling in, release your breath control and go back to being a witness to the natural flow of breath in your body. Lao Tzu says, be content with what you have, rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there's nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. Enjoy your constructive rest, active rest, and I'll be back shortly. I apologize if you heard my husband in the background. He's on a work meeting, quarantine life. What can you do? Start to make some movements in your fingers and toes. Lengthen your breath. 
Wiggle the fingers, toes, circle knees and ankles. Take a full body stretch if you'd like to. Whenever you're ready, roll over onto your side. Bend the knees, rest a moment in the feudal position and think of something to be grateful for here. Take your time, rise to a seated position and we'll close class together here. Once you're there, join the palms in front of the heart. Close your eyes if you'd like to. And one last time, honor your intention that you set for class today. And then join me by bringing the hands to the forehead to remind us to have clear and loving thoughts. Bring the hands to the heart to remind us to have clear and loving intentions. And then hands to mouth to remind us to have clear and loving communications. And we'll send positive energy out to all beings everywhere. Thank you for joining me for class today. I hope you enjoyed. Namaste. Join me next time. And again, have a great day.